Hello, and welcome to this presentation on copyright literacy 2021, seven years on from the multinational survey. Just a quick note that when we submitted this, it was actually uh, last year, and so I've just made a slight amendment to the presentation title. So um, we'll just introduce ourselves. Um, we could just go to the next slide. I'm Jane Secker and I'm a senior lecturer in educational development and I'm at City University of London. My name's Chris Morrison. I'm the copyright licensing and policy manager at the University of Kent. Um, and Jane and I work together uh, on the topic of copyright literacy. And we're also the uh, co-owners of this uh, website blog where we share our research and uh, uh, contributions from guest authors on the topic of copyright literacy. Okay, so um, what we're starting with really is going back to some research that was actually first presented at the um, ECL conference in 2013. Um, it was the work of Tanya Todorova when she looked to investigate the understanding of copyright literacy amongst library uh, professionals and those in the cultural heritage sector in Bulgaria. And um, it led to a multinational survey. There was uh, 13 or 14 countries involved and uh, the following publication came out in 2017. Um, so lots and lots of research done in this area. Um, and um, broadly speaking, some of the similar conclusions that were drawn around the world, um, which we will go into, but essentially that, that copyright literacy levels were probably lower than uh, you might hope. So one of the things that came out of our involvement in the copyright literacy uh, multinational survey was wanting to define ourselves exactly what, what we we thought copyright literacy was about. And so uh, we developed this definition, acquiring and demonstrating the appropriate knowledge, skills, and behaviors to enable the ethical creation and use of copyright material. So we were very keen on really framing this in relation to information literacy, not just have it about learning facts about copyright or being um, a, uh, a practicing lawyer, but actually understanding how this relates to communities that have to make sense of copyright law in order to undertake their activities. And the thinking on copyright literacy and its importance for um, the library community, I guess, has moved on quite significantly, particularly with the publication by IFLA in 2018 of this statement on copyright education and copyright literacy. Um, we were really pleased and we think that the work that the community did on the multinational study really helped um, recognize the, the importance of li librarians working in this area. So the fact that copyright is um, touching all different aspects of work that we do around uh, making collections accessible, preserving them, um, but also particularly work around scholarly communication, open access, um, and uh, digitizing and making available material for online learning. So the IFLA statement, I think in some ways was a bit of a, a landmark and a, a mark to the kind of um, significance of this work to the community. So clearly, the IFLA got behind uh, copyright literacy um, as a concept and created this statement because it matters and it matters to communities that are impacted uh, by those in the information profession. Uh, but some some key things that that um, make taking an information literacy approach relevant here is um, firstly that copyright law is not always clear. So it's down to individuals to interpret or understand some of the nuance involved in, in limitations and exceptions to copyright. So these are the things that you're allowed to do with copyright material, uh, typically for purposes such as research and, and education. Um, and it's, it's understanding how they relate to, to a practice of, of an individual or a community or a group of people. Um, and certainly we see it within an institutional context where we are responsible for copyright or have um, input into how institutions, uh, education institutions, research, um, create their processes and, and undertake practices is getting uncomfortable with the uncertainty that comes at the heart of copyright law. Um, it's not always clear exactly uh, what is and what isn't legal. 
um, and there is an element of risk that needs to be understood. And we think that, that that's something that needs to be understood right across the board. But at the policy and legislation level, there's a number of contentious um, changes happening um, where copyright is at the heart of them. So Plan S, the recent um, development in scholarly communications and, and open access um, across Europe and having influence beyond Europe as well, um, has at its heart questions about ownership of copyright and how scholarly works should be made available and, and what others can do with them. Um, and there is also uh, a recent uh, directive, a copyright directive from the European Union, which uh, uh, has some pretty major changes that the library community um, has been central to, to advocating for. But nonetheless, there is change in the legislation that needs to be interpreted at an individual searcher, student, teacher um, and, and library level. So one of the things that we've noted in our work in this area um, over the last uh, six or seven years is the increasing importance of working together as a community. And um, we've been very much influenced by the work of Lav and Wenger about what they call communities of practice. So this comes from the education and the sort of workplace learning field um, where um, you have this idea of a domain, um, which is an area of shared interest. So um, in this case, it's obviously specifically around copyright, but it's also um, particularly since the pandemic been around the relationship of copyright to online teaching and learning. You've also got your community, um, which obviously um, in our case is, is the library community, but it's also a slightly wider community. It includes the lecturers and teachers at our universities. It also includes um, learning technologists and others who work um, in the sort of field, um, helping to provide access to material to learners. Um, and there, the community is really important because what we've seen during the pandemic is lots and lots of discussion, lots of events, um, online events for talking about these issues. And then you have the practice, um, which is your kind of body of knowledge. Um, Chris alluded to some of this about how perhaps some of this is, is you know, it, it is a practice that's um, fraught a little bit with, with some questions of, of risk and uncertainty. Um, it's often knowledge around what you can and can't do, what copyright law says is and isn't, um, you know, uh, fair. And, and so this um, tacit knowledge hasn't been written down in many cases, and the community has to come together to talk about this. Um, and that's really, I think, what we've seen happening um, in the UK community um, since March 2020. So when we, we've been uh, engaging with our community since the, the pandemic began, and, and this is when we've looked at how things are set up, in, in the UK where, where we, we, we live and where we operate. We see there are some national communities of practice. We have a discussion list there that we are the co-owners of, but we know there's local communities of practice. There are, there's guidance and, and training events around and about, and there are groups that are, that are there and advocate. So they, they look at copyright from different elements, uh, but we felt there was a real need to bring some of those together. And particularly when we, we, we had that moment um, of crisis where uh, copyright, there was a lot of focus on it, about how were we going to shift teaching and activities online? So this is what led us um, partly to, um, to, to look to set up um, a new group in this area. We actually were approached by the Association for Learning Technology, who from the outset of the, the pandemic had um, agreed to host a webinar series that Chris and I ran. Um, but that in itself sort of developed this idea that there needed to be a special interest group that went beyond the library world because copyright was having such a big impact 
um, on the online learning community that wasn't just the library community. And much of the expertise was kind of a little bit trapped in, in that library world. Um, that creating this new special interest group would enable us to, to actually, you know, break down some of those barriers to bring people together to have conversations. So if you're interested in finding out more, we've got the website there um, of the special interest group. It is open to international members as well. Um, and, and please do um, consider um, dropping us a line if you want to find out more. But this group wasn't the, the only group that we've brought together since being inspired uh, to get involved in copyright literacy following um, the ECL uh, work. We, we created our own um, uh, event called Ice Pops, which is the International Copyright Literacy Event with playful opportunities for practitioners and scholars. We ran a version of it this year that was online called I Can't Believe It's Not Ice Pops, but we actually have had two face-to-face um, uh, -face, uh, 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 sessions, um, events in, in, in 2019 and 2018. So we're looking to, to continue that. So, so that's a time where we bring people together to, to share their own approaches to copyright education. Um, but that's you know, not the only thing we've been doing as well uh, in the, over the last 18 months. Yes, yeah, so I mentioned um, earlier, uh, just briefly, that we launched a webinar series. We actually started this um, in March 2020, um, the um, copyright and online learning during the COVID-19 pandemic um, webinar series. And um, we have been, um, we've continued to do this really since that date. The webinars um, are now not on a weekly basis, um, but um, certainly at the start of the crisis, they were. Um, and they've been a, a place where people can come online um, and get support and ask questions, but also get updates, um, you know, particularly in the early days when, you know, there was a lot of uncertainty and a lot of questions um, about what could and couldn't be done in terms of copyright and uh, shifting content online. So, Chris, tell us a bit about some of the stats that we saw. Well, we've we've run well, by the time you're watching this video, we will have done 41 webinars. Uh, we get around 60 participants at each one. Uh, they typically do come from our community in the UK higher education, but increasingly we are seeing those from around the world joining us. And we've had a number of guest posts from uh, uh, participants uh, and, and colleagues um, in Europe, such as in Spain and, and in Germany um, and from across the US. Um, we've seen a dramatic increase in the number Number of uh, people coming to to look at the the page um, since since we first started doing these on our on our website. Uh, more questions are on our UK discussion list. More people joining that list. So we're seeing there's a lot of activity here online as a result of of the pandemic. But what we want to sort of turn to next is also what um, impact this works had on our our own practice and and for myself. So I, I teach. Um, at City University, I teach a master's course, um, which is offered to staff uh, primarily who want to get a, a, a teaching uh, qualification in higher education. And I created um, three years ago uh, a module that's um, on digital literacies and open practice. Um, this this module's actually run um, now three times, including um, last year it ran fully online, as it will this year as well. It was very much informed um, by some teaching I'd done on a couple of other courses at the University of Manchester, but also some experience I had when I went out to Uruguay in August 2018 and I taught a course for teachers and librarians there. Um, but the module itself really um, is, is a way of, of actually talking about copyright in a broader context. So you can see from the title, it doesn't mention copyright um, at the outset. It talks about digital literacies and open practice. Um, but I'm really interested in um, where copyright fits um, because it's so integral to both of these um, topics. And in fact, from some research that I've done um, on staff attitudes towards digital literacies and open practice, um, really what I've started to see is, is that copyright is a really important issue. Um, it's quite an interesting way of doing some interviews with staff, not to say I'm coming to talk to you about copyright, but to see um, how that impacted um, on their teaching, to see um, also um, about their own 
concerns around their, their own levels of digital literacy and knowledge about what they could and couldn't do um, and um, you know how they wanted to share and make available their own teaching and their research which which very much um, obviously impacts on, on how much they understand copyright and some of the agreements that they might have signed um, with academic publishers. If you want to read more, I've got a reference at the end to the, the a, a recent paper um, that was published um, at a conference. So at the University of Kent, um, the, the work on the copyright literacy has inspired uh, me to, to uh, create this strategy with colleagues to use the work that Jane and I have done to inform discussions um, to say well how institutionally can we look right across all the areas of activity at the University of Kent to say what how should we be approaching copyright and particularly looking at it from a copyright literacy perspective. So this was published last year in 2020. Here is our vision statement that by 2025 people working and studying at the University of Kent will feel confident in making informed decisions about using copyright material and will understand the copyright plays in innovation and creation of new knowledge. And the final statement is our approach to copyright education will support our strategic objectives by informing policy and practice. So we're very much supporting what the university is trying to do rather than looking at copyright as the, the um, uh, the stick that we need to beat people with in order to be compliant as such. It's about how do we uh, approach this in a way that supports what we want to do. Uh, and a key aspect of this is developing a network of staff whose roles involve advising on aspects of copyright law. Um, so we appreciate that it's in a mixture with a number of other different issues such as data protection and privacy um, that we have to think about often in, in context. Uh, but it very much takes that um, copyright literacy uh, approach. And I guess underpinned by all of this, uh, both our institutions has been um, the playful approach that we both take towards copyright education. Um, you might be aware we developed two educational resources that are openly licensed, um, Copyright the Card Game, um, which is um, based on UK law, but has been adapted um, by a number of other countries um, so that it can be played um, and, and relates to that, how their legislation works, but also our game that's on open access, scholarly communication and the sort of choices you make as an academic um, throughout your career, so the publishing trap. Both of these games we've also, during the pandemic, adapted to play um, online, and I think it's um, a really important um, aspect of our approach to copyright literacy that, that using these kind of games-based approaches is, is much, much more engaging um, for staff and for students or for whoever you're talking to. Absolutely. So the fact that we've got the combination of our playful games based approach and the research we've done has uh, given us the opportunity to travel to a number of places around the world. We've been invited to uh, there's pictures of us in Portugal, in Poland, in Kyrgyzstan, um, um, and we've had others across the world pick up the card game and there's an Australian version in New Zealand, the US version. Uh, there's a version of the publishing trap in Germany. I think that's where you were at the bottom there. So that's been it's been a really good opportunity to speak to people. But of course, this was all pre pandemic when uh, international travel um, was possible. So we found it a, a, a rather kind of strange experience to be traveling the world since March of last year, but actually not really leaving our rooms. <laughs> Yes, um, and so actually what we've been doing really um, since March 2020 is probably talking even more to people around the world about copyright um, issues. Um, being online meant that we've been able to join events um, in all sorts of places from you know New Zealand um, to Jamaica, um, to doing some um, training in Kenya, um, Switzerland, you know, you, you can see the list of countries um, on the map. And the international community, I think, has really um, been able to come together um, at this time. It's enabling librarians and educators to share really good practices, um, to share their experiences of the shift to online learning, um, and to share, you know, their, their, their good practice in copyright literacy. Um, and so we, you know, wanted to just end with a, a number of reflections really um, 
on where that kind of leaves us. So, you know, seven years on from the multinational study, I think we would both be quite clear that copyright literacy matters now more than ever before. Um, I think we, we both still feel quite strongly as well that copyright um, as an issue needs to be um, not just treated in isolation um, as some kind of special scary thing. It needs to be embedded in digital and information literacy programs. It needs to be taught in a much more integrated way um, to audiences. And I think that, that this shift that we saw to online learning that's obviously continuing to a large extent um, since the pandemic has raised all sorts of copyright queries and it's prompted many people who wouldn't have previously considered um, knowing about copyright to be important to realise, you know, they, they, they do need to understand more about this to think about, you know, the, the concept of fairness and, and educational exceptions and how those might apply. So what we found in talking to um, colleagues, international colleagues, is that there are, you know, different laws in different countries. Um, but the challenges are the same. The challenges are common across all those similar communities in education and research um, and in those people trying to uh, help those get access to information as part of their everyday lives. Um, and so we wonder, how do we bring those communities together? Um, we certainly see the work that IFLA have done in bringing the library communities together and they're working on copyright education. Um, we've certainly done work with our Ice Pops conference to bring those different communities together, but I don't think we could have a single community that would allow this to happen um, because there are so many different local contexts and different perspectives on it, as we've said. Um, but uh, I, a question, I get the question to leave you with is really whether um, eSeal, there's a continuing place for eSeal to continue to host conversations about copyright literacy and particularly put copyright in uh, relationship to information literacy more broadly. I think that's our time up. Um, we hope you can join us um, for some uh, questions um, at the, the live session. We've just got our final um, reflection, references, sorry, um, and our, our uh, credits. So thank you. Thank you very much.